pretty. When are they supposed to get snow, Christine? Tuesday. <laughs> what day is today? Tuesday. Oh, okay. Well, I thought yesterday was Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Christy is the unofficial weather person for our whole entire squad. Um, and as far as forecasting goes. Now, I'm more of a current weather right now kind of guy. So you can compare me to a weather rock. In other words, if I'm wet, then it's raining. If I'm dry, then it's dry. If I'm hot, then it's hot. If I'm cold, it's cold. Now Christy likes to forecast the weather and predict the weather. She told us we didn't have anything to worry about as far as snow goes because it wasn't supposed to snow until when? Tuesday. Right. Unfortunately, what she failed to realize is that we pulled up the camp on Monday. Right. Right. And it's Tuesday. So, her forecasting was not wrong. <laughs> it was her calendar ability that was wrong. But you know what? It's okay because we're warm now. Uh, we're still wet, but we're on our way to drying up, hopefully. And uh, we're driving through this beautiful snowstorm. What are your thoughts on the Mr. Buddy portable heater? Or heater buddy, portable heater. The small one that we got. Um, small one works good, but the big one would probably heat up the whole tent. Yeah. My only problem with that small one is the fact that it's angled the way that it is. Um. Yeah, you can't change it. Yeah. That's my only issue with the small one. It's pointed to the ceiling. Yeah, and when we're sleeping on air mattresses on the ground, that's kind of an issue. Now, if we were in like a cot, you know, a little bit off the ground, that would be probably perfect. But we're not. Uh, that would be my only issue. The other thing is, is I think that it's got to be designed like that in order for it to not catch something on fire should it, you know, flip over. You know, because it's just kind of rolling on itself. Could be. So. But other than that, I mean, it, it works okay. Um, it still uses those... Um, little one pound cylinders that I hate so I don't really like it for that but I don't know of any other way that you could use something like that so Christy and I figured it out as with anything else handling this weather you just have to have the right tools and we've come to the conclusion we just don't have the right tools uh, you know they got special pants and jackets I see these folks wearing uh, shoes and special tents and all that good stuff so good news is those are clear blue skies right ahead of us so it looks like we're gonna be in the clear so out of the snow it's turned to just rain at this point and the temperature's gone up from 32 to 34 degrees so we're making progress every little bit counts Christy and I are back on Boring Roads aka the interstate and we are headed uh, we had to be rerouted because of the landslide mudslide and I'm not real sure uh, where all that stuff connected back up so I sent my GPS to where uh, the Transamerica Trail actually crosses over highway or interstate 84 right past Boise so that's where we're headed to now. It's roughly about 70 miles from here on the interstate. So, um, coming up on Farewell Bend State Park, which I stayed there last time. However, this time we're not going to stay there. Uh, we're going to keep it moving on through Oregon so that way we can make up some time and, uh, and go from there. So, we're finally in Oregon and I would suspect uh, we should get to the end of Oregon. I'm really, really, really hoping that we get to the end of Oregon by uh, tomorrow. So that's the current situation, and that's where we're at. One thing I've noticed a lot um, riding mainly out west is they've got like random 
like circle fences around rocks. Like this is one right here on the right hand side. What is that? See how they got the rocks down in there? Like, what does that do? I would assume it's got something to do with the fence, but um, you see a lot of those, and I've seen a whole lot of those out here. Uh, but I've seen a lot just out west. Like, what, what do those do? What's the purpose of those? So, Christy, that um, I'm hoping for us to be out of Oregon by tomorrow. Um, you know, that's the that's the main goal because that would be day 20, and that would give us that would put us right on schedule. It would give us the 10 days to get back, meaning that we could stop and mess around in a couple different places and all that. So that's the idea. That's the goal. And right now we're we're on track. We're a little bit behind. We do need to make up some ground. We don't really have any time to mess around, which as you can see, there's not really much out here that you can mess around and do. So we're okay there. So I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, the little reservoir there, or not little, that's a big reservoir. The waves are just tremendous in there. It's just an indicator of how much the wind is blowing out here. Uh, Christy and I both have decided that being cold is one thing, but being cold and wet is another. And we think that we're going to be um, possibly not cold, but cool and dry um, tonight. So that'll be a good change of pace. Um, speaking of dry, it's very dry in Oregon. I've, I've noticed almost immediately that the uh, the road that we're on is just kicking up a ton of dust. So that tells me that it's been a while since this area has had rain. Although it looks like there's rain clouds over there, which is kind of crazy. I wonder what made people determined that they were going to take and raise cows and horses and goats and sheep and stuff like that, but nobody ever raises deer. Like, you know what I mean? No. Like nobody ever decided, hey, you know, let's just, you know why I bet? A theory of mine that I just came up with. So they can jump over the fence. Yeah, you're not going to contain them. <laughs> that might be why that they've never decided that they were just going to harvest deer, I guess. But horses jump fences too. Just not as often. Not as often. Yeah. But it does happen. Maybe the mindset's different because the horse's mindset is just kind of, oh, we've well, got to stay in here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Same with the cow. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably why, though. Dang, dang. We're on National Forest Road, uh, number 16, here in Prairie City, Oregon. And I just saw a sign that says, um, Vehicle with lugs prohibited. Uh, I don't know what lugs are. I think a lug nuts. Now, are lugs also like the screws in the tires for snow, or how's that work? What what are lugs on tires, or vehicles with lugs? Well, we stopped to have ham sandwiches, and uh, it's snowing again. Very light this time. We are, I don't know where, we're close to the John Day River. I don't know, it, in some national forest. I don't exactly know where we're at. Um... <laughs> but anyway we're gonna get gas here soon um at probably prairie city we're outside of prairie city oregon if that tells you where we're at i just know it's cold and snowing so all right so we are on national forest road 435 and the trail has gotten pretty narrow we are inside prairie city or outside of prairie city oregon trying to make it over this mountain pass and once we make it over this mountain pass we should hook up with a uh, bigger uh, forest service road which I think is 16 if I'm not mistaken uh, based off the little map that uh, we 
talked to an older gentleman that was hunting and he had a map through here but it's pretty tight tight thick brush cleaning the uh, forerunner up for us <laughs> it needs a car wash right Telling Christy that Oregon's wild, man. The the landscape here is definitely rugged. Definitely rugged, to say the least. And volatile. I mean, it was just what 54, 55 degrees. Now it's 39 and and uh, snowing. So it's quite crazy. All right, so we are in need of gas and we're in John Day, Oregon. And I had forgotten up until now, as I was sitting here trying to figure out why in the hell every single gas station is literally 40 cent higher than everywhere else in the nation per gallon. And then I realized I had forgotten that in Oregon, you cannot pump your own gas. You have to have somebody else pump your gas whoever is working the gas station or wherever you're getting gas has to pump your gas. You can't pump your own gas here. And that, my friends, is the reason that it's 40 cent higher, I believe. 40 cent higher per gallon. I hope they pay these guys We've run into a bit of a traffic jam here on uh, National Force 1665. Got some heavy traffic. It's just a parking lot here, folks. You have to find an alternate route. Yeah. All right, we're on Ingalls Street in Mount Vernon, Oregon, about to cross over the this mountain range here. I'm not real sure it's called Wolf Mountain. what the mountain range is called, but I do know that uh, Wolf Mountain is in it. And Wolf Mountain and I have a little bit of history uh, from last year. Last year I got stuck on Wolf Mountain for about a day and a half in the snow. So this time we're going to pass this mountain and once we pass the mountain here at the low in this area right now behind or right now the temperature is 57 the low in this area you said is what 40 47. 47 so not that bad right here i imagine on top of the mountain it'll get kind of cold but we're going to cross over the mountain and then once we make this pass over the mountain um, from there we'll find a, a place to camp on the other side so that's the current situation is this a standoff? What are those things hanging down from there? I don't know. <laughs> from their throats. What are those? What's all over his head? Her head? Ticks. Ticks? Sounds like ticks. Oh my gosh. You got stuff all over you, girl. I don't know if those are ticks, though, are they? Maybe we couldn't have caught that on camera, but we just had a bobcat run out in front of us. First for me. Christy's seen bobcats before. I've never seen a bobcat, though. That was a uh, first. I would have liked to have seen him a little bit better than darting out in front of me at about 45 on a gravel road, but nonetheless. Cross over uh, Wolf Mountain. Done with that portion of it now. Uh, now, I think we're going to continue on through the, what is this, Malheur National Forest? We're on National Forest Road 5840. Clouds are starting to open up a little bit. The sun's coming over to the left.
So pretty stoked because we just looked at the map and it looks like we are pretty far along in Oregon. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've made some tremendous timing um, through Oregon. Uh, today we have traveled a good many miles. We're at 364 and I set the, uh, I reset the odometer late in the travels. So but we're at 364 miles now, so I, I would suspect that we've traveled well over 400 miles today, uh, which is good because I planned for uh, 20 days on the Transamerica Trail, and tomorrow is the 20th day, so one way, shape, or form or the other, we will hit Port Orford, Oregon tomorrow, uh, which is good. It's kind of bittersweet though, I was telling Christy, because the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen in my life happened in Port Orford, Oregon, and the most stars I've ever seen in my life happened in Port Orford, Oregon. Uh, so that kind of, that kind of sucks. Uh, but on the flip side of that, uh, she'll be able to see, and I'll be able to see, uh, sunset along the Pacific Coast somewhere else. And I know that it's sure to be just as pretty, if, if not maybe even prettier than uh, Port Orford, Oregon. So. Looking forward to that. That was a big old tree that it fell. Looking forward to that. Right now we're on National Forest Road 5820 and traveling through uh, Mitchell or Wheeler, Oregon. So yeah, we're making pretty good time. There's tree downs everywhere. Still trying to look for a suitable camp spot that's not going to be too entirely cold, but up there on top of this mountain will not be uh, our hopeberry. It will be down at the bottom of the mountain for sure. I'm thinking once this road connects back with 26 or highway number 26, uh, then we should be able to find a pretty suitable uh, campsite. The kind of gauge that I'm going off right now is just the temperature gauge. If I see the temperature jump at around 50 degrees, then that's probably where we can set up camp. So right now here it's 43 degrees and it's still about 6.25, so 6.30 um, Pacific time right now. That's what we're doing. So I asked Christy if she was excited because we're almost done with the Trans-American Trail, which in case you guys haven't realized, this part of the gig is not her forte. This is not really what she had in mind for a vacation. Daggum. Skirt. Yeah, and I told her too already that this part of backing up and all that good stuff happens a lot in Oregon because the it's like the maps can't read fast enough through these little switchback areas so anyway so I asked Christy if she's excited what was your answer yes and no for the reasons um excited because we're going to move on to more of the stuff that I think is fun which is the sightseeing Say, so you want to go see where there's people? Not people. Oh, there's people in all those places. And you know, I didn't pack my patience. I'm excited to go see, or I'm excited to go be in the warm weather. Yeah, I'm ready for that too. Yeah. Um, I'm not excited about being in the big cities. Vegas is cool. <clears throat> um, and, you know, realistically, California's okay, too. Uh, the only thing is, is, I just, I don't like being around a lot of people. Um, not because I have some kind of weird social anxiety or anything, but because, ultimately, uh, people very much so frustrate me. Their actions frustrate me. The um, ignorance of a lot of people frustrates me. So, uh, that, that part of the trip I don't really have a desire for. Although I am very much so looking forward to Randy's Donuts. Where is Randy's Donuts? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah. Look forward to that because they're great. And another thing that I'm looking forward to is El Pollo Loco because their chicken is very good. And other than that, I can't, I can't really think of, you know, anything in California per se, that I'm dying to go see. Uh, Vegas, like I said, is fun. And then after Vegas, I think is even more fun. Um, that's all the Grand Canyon and uh, Turo Weep and 
all that area, so I'll be excited when we get there. So, mm -hmm. all in all, I don't necessarily like Oregon per se because it's been cold every single time that I've come here. Um, but the Trans America Trail to me is uh, the fun part just because of the remoteness and the fact that there just really isn't anybody. Out of all the states you've been in so far, what was, what's been your favorite? I can't say yet because we're not done. So far, just because this is this, we're almost done with the Trans America Trail. This is what Oregon looks like pretty much the whole way through. Yeah, no, no, I don't like Oregon. <clears throat> don't like Oregon? Mm -mm, I don't like Oregon. Why for? Too many things going on at one time all the time. Weather wise. I got you. So the weather's been very unstable since we've been here. Um, it's been raining, it's been windy, it's been snowing, it's been sleeting. sleeting, it's been a little bit of everything. Thunderstorm. What about Idaho? Idaho is okay. It's cold. I thought Utah was very pretty. I think Utah's probably by far my favorite. I think Utah, Utah and Colorado. Utah and Colorado, yeah. And Utah and Colorado was also filled with the nicest people that oh. we've come across. Oh yeah. And that's even for that's that's even nicer than the people that we came across in the southern states. Yeah. Which I know the south has got the uh, kind of a portrayal of being you know nice. being nice and southern hospitality, but I'm here to tell you Cal uh, Colorado blows South Carolina out <laughs> of the water. It blows nearly every state that I've been in in the south out of the water. So uh, Colorado is just a it's a really cool place. And the mixture of people that you get in both the places, Colorado and Utah, is really cool. Um, I'm a fan of mixed people. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, everybody doing their own little thing. And Colorado and Utah definitely have that. They definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say. There's, you know, there's not a whole lot of, I mean, I guess there is, you know, little cliques and crowds that people fit into. But Colorado definitely had a, 